Well, do you ever have one of those days where you just feel really down or you feel unhappy or anxiety's getting to you or you're feeling a little bit depressed and you need cheering up but there's no one around you to cheer you up? Well, I'm gonna show you something that can really help you with this. You can also make these for other people and give them as gifts and they're so easy to make and a lot of love goes in them. All you need is an old shoebox and some items. So, or probably things that you've got all around your craft room anyway. Now these are called bad day boxes and the name of the box really makes it sound like I'm giving you a bad day but it's not, it's to help you cure a bad day or to just give you that lift, that feeling of being appreciated. So the first thing that I'm going to do with my cardboard box is I'm going to cover it in paper how I normally do using some glue. For my box what I'm going to be doing is covering it in kitchen paper and the reason I'm doing that is it gives it much better strength but also it will give it a bit of texture as well I'm just using a white glue here to put that on like this and then I'll go all the way around and cover it now if you don't want to be bothered with this stage that's not a problem there's lots of ways you can do it you could just paint it with some poster paints or acrylic paint cover it in material if you're really good at that sort of thing I'm not. Upholster it in a way, I suppose. Or what you can do is cover it in some wrapping paper. There's so many different ways you can do it. But you, all you need to do is just really make it however you make it. And that's going to make you smile. And hopefully the person that you give it to, or if you're keeping it yourself, is going to make you smile. So once that's completely covered and dry, I'll show you what to do next. Well, it's all nice and dry now and it actually really does firm this box up a great deal. I haven't put paper on the bottom because I am going to cover that bottom with something else, which you'll see in a minute. And it closes up really nice and tightly now as well. I mean, if you haven't got a box like this and you've got one with a separate lid, that would work just as well. Probably be easier to cover. What I'm going to do is give this now a paint of white all the way over just to really even out the colour that's underneath before I go to decorate. And I want to make sure that when I decorate this, that it's nice and bright. Well, this is all nice and dry now. And what I'm going to do is put a decoupage picture on the top. I've got loads of this stuff. I love it. I like using the napkins as well. <laughs> There's so many different sorts. But I've actually chosen this one because I think it's really, really pretty. Now, I don't want to have to match up. Look how pretty that is. That's so pretty. Now, I don't want to have to match up because it doesn't fit right across here. So what I've decided to do on this top portion of the box is do some little panelling. And I think that'll work out really well. And I'm going to make that out of an Amazon envelope. All I'll need is four pieces of this. I need to cut them all the same width. So I've got my four pieces now and I'm going to have them going across here like this. But with a slight indent going all the way around which is going to be probably the same width of this again. So I've used centimetres so two centimetres in from there. So I'm just going to draw that on, going all the way around. So two centimetres from the edge and lay my little mark down. It's not going to matter too much because I am going to paint the box once it's done. So there's two centimetres there. And as these are two centimetres wide, I can use these now going all the way across. But you don't have to make it as fancy putting panelling on it. You can make it as easy or as complex as you want to make. Now I'm going to pop on my piece of this and I'm going to let that overlap slightly because these pieces of card are going to glue onto there once they're done. So I've now got these lines, these pencil lines that I know I need to work up to. Now this is, I think these are two ply. Now I'm not going to take the backing off this piece here because I don't feel I need to. But what I do need to do is mark on here where I need to cut it to to make sure it's the right size and then trim that up to size. Now we've got that cut to the right size, I'm going to use good old Mod Podge to glue this down with. Now if I get a few wrinkles in it then that so be it, but I am going to try not to have too many in it. That's on there now and I'm going to just go over this now with a coat of Mod Podge all the way over it. Well while that's drying I'm going to paint these and I have actually decided I'm not doing corner joints like that. I'm going to do joints that butt up against each other. Purely because they're so much easier. And I'm going to paint these gold. And this is going to be my frame. The gold paint's dry on here. And what I'm 
doing is painting over some gold leaf glue on this or gilding glue which remains sticky once it's dry because I'm now going to gild these to make them pop out that little bit more. This won't take long to dry on this cardboard. Once it's gone clear it's ready to use. Doing the edges as well. Making a right mess with it. I've got it all over my hands everywhere so I'm going to need to wash my hands before I touch the leaf in because if not it will stick to me and nothing else. Okay we'll give them a few minutes to dry. Well I've spread out my gold leaf. You've got to be careful not to breathe too heavily on it at this stage and now I'm going to place down my pieces making sure they're fully covered and now I'm going to take this one and turn that on its edge and that one and turn it on its edge push that down all connected and then just take them apart. I'm ever so messy with gold leaf glue. I'm no expert at this, as you've probably seen. But I do get what the results that I want most of the time. Now I can just turn that over and then brush away any bits I don't want. I will link this in the description below. It's not real gold. It's a fake gold leaf. But it works just as well. Well, it works well. It makes it look really pretty, I think. Well, there we go. That's that finished. I'll go ahead, finish the others. And then hopefully that decoupage should be dry. Well, this is nearly dry now. And while it's been drying, I painted the inside of the box gold. I am going to put something on there. So that's not going to look like that. But before that's completely dry, I want to go ahead and paint it all blue. And I can paint up to these edges because they're going to be covered covered up with our gold covered pieces. I'm using ordinary acrylic paint because I will give this whole thing a varnish once I finish decorating it. Well this is all dry now and ready for me to put the base in and what I'm using here is some cork that's got some sticky on the back. Now I have measured this <laughs> twice so the likelihood is this isn't going to fit. But we will see. Yeah, I didn't measure that very well. Fortunately, if you haven't pushed it right down really hard, you can take it up. I think my issue with this is actually that I've got it at an angle more than anything. And the cork's in there now, and that gives it a nice base. And what I'm going to go around is with the satin varnish and varnish the whole box before I do the next stage. And then let that dry probably for the next two or three hours. And then it's nearly finished. Just got to put a bit more decoration on it and the border around this. Well that's dry enough now for me to put these on and what I'm going to be using for this is the all-purpose clear glue because I know that that will stick that down really really well and I won't have to keep putting anything on it or any weight on it. I'm just covering it with quite a good layer and then I'm going to let that dry and then while that's drying I'm also going to put some on here going all the way down and then when you put those two bits together they will tack together permanently. I've had about two, three minutes now to dry. So I can now pop that on there. See, look, that's stuck on there really well already. Push that down and then let that finish off drying. And I can go around and build it up doing exactly that method all the way around. Well, this is all lovely and dry now. And I've just got one more thing to do. And that's to pop on these, which says Mum's Bad Day Box. And then I'll show you what I'm going to put in it to start it off for her. There we go. That's come out all nice. Mum's bad day box. And this is what I've put in it so far to start it off with. And Mum will be able to put stuff in it herself. The things that mean a lot to her. There's a photograph there of me. Look at that. Look how young I was there. And thin. My son when he was a kid. My grandmother. Another one of my son. Another one of my son and me. And also a little scroll here that I've made that she can undo. And mum's got lots of little things and trinkets and bits and pieces that she can put in it. Wrote a little poem for my mum to go in there as well. So if she's having a bad day, all she has to do is open this little box. Take out some of the things and cheer herself up and see when things were good. And I think that's come out really, really pretty. Hope you've enjoyed this project as much as I have. I love making these. I have one of these for myself and I put anybody that writes me a really lovely comment or sends me a lovely message. I print it off and I stick it in there. And if I'm feeling a bit low, then I'll have a little read of them. Move that like button, hit that subscribe button. Check out the video that I've got coming up next. It's a great upcycle video. But most of all, enjoy your crafting. Take care. Bye.